Our theme for Lent this year is building on a firm foundation. We're looking at key foundational principles of our faith, how they apply to our lives as followers of Jesus, how it applies to our church family, and also to our denomination. We've been utilizing a book by several authors sponsored by the Wesleyan Covenant Association titled A Firm Foundation, Hope and Vision for a New Methodist Future. And we are hopeful in looking forward to a new Methodist future. Today's topic was supposed to be Holy Spirit, Fire, and Power, but I didn't want to preach on Holy Spirit, Fire, and Power without a live congregation, so I jumped ahead a few weeks, and our theme for this morning is Building on a Firm Foundation, Dynamic Discipleship. I'd like you to think about those two words for a minute. Dynamic discipleship, dynamic, powerful, vibrant, full of life. It's the same root word uh, as the same root as the root for the word dynamite. And it's, it's kind of ri- ironic because when we think of dynamite, we think of something being destroyed or, or blown up. But dynamic discipleship is about building up. It's about transforming lives and changing lives and, and really changing our world. And then the word, dis, word discipleship. A disciple is a learner, a student, an apprentice of Jesus. And it's not just about learning head knowledge, but heart and soul knowledge that's applied to our lives and then lived out in faith through the power of the Holy Spirit. Today we're focusing on dynamic discipleship as followers of Jesus. The early Methodist church was a great force for good and for the gospel in America. I was told years ago that at one time, way back when, there were more Methodist churches in, United, in the America than there were post offices. And if we look around our own general area and see that there's a Methodist church in basically every small town, we can believe that that was a ca- the case at one time. From 1776 to 1850, the church membership, Methodist church membership, went from 8,500 members to 1.2 million members. There was unprecedented growth. Again, years ago, I was told that at one time in America, one out of four people in America were Methodist. Unfortunately, that's not the case today. These are troubling times for our denomination, for many churches, and for quite a few Methodist Christians. But it doesn't have to stay that way. If we look at the Great Commission that Jesus gave to his disciples, and really it's for all of us as well, all followers of Jesus today as well, then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and know that I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Dynamic discipleship through the power of Jesus can change everything. Years ago, many years ago, when I was in high school, I was a hurdler on the track team. Well, my ninth grade year, I tried. I was sort of a hurdler on the track team. I I practiced, but I wasn't very good. I didn't make any extra effort. I was a, a slow runner and I dreaded track meets because it was so embarrassing for me because I did so poorly at the meets. And, and sometimes we feel like that in our Christian life. We're, we're a member of a church or we're maybe a, a Christian in name only, but, but we just seem to be struggling every step of the way. My 10th grade year, I didn't go out for track, but if somebody asked me, I could still honestly say I was a hurdler on the track team. It was a true statement on the service, but I had no commitment. I was not really a part of the team that year, and it 
and it really made no difference in my life. And again, there are some Christians who are like that, that at one time we were part of the church or, or, or part of God's team, but maybe have drifted away and it just it wasn't, it made no difference in our lives. By my 11th grade year, again, I was a hurdler on the track team, but this time it meant so much to me. It meant so much more to me. My, my best friend, Tom Loy, he encouraged me, he worked with me, he pushed me, he taught me, he demonstrated how to hurdle and he, and he helped me work through it. He even had a book called The Hurdler's Bible that he would read and study and he encouraged me to as well to help us both become better hurdlers. I listened, I tried, I failed, I tried again, I practiced with the team, I practiced with Tom, we both put in a lot of extra effort and I actually got better and did pretty well. I can now run in a race without being embarrassed and actually scored some points for the team. And sometimes our Christian lives can be that way as well. We, we come a, alive, we have a fresh start and a new beginning. The, the spiritual disciplines become a, a part of our lives just as, as I learned to hurdle and as I learned to become a, a better, better hurdler, I, I had to work on different parts of the race. And it all made a difference. As I said, I, I, I wasn't just going through the motions anymore. By my senior year, it was, it was more of the same, but only in an expanded way. We practiced harder, we practiced more, uh, Tom and I, and he kept encouraging me and he kept pushing me. And because of Tom's encouragement, because of his help, because of teaching, the coaching, the friendship, pushing me to excel, I had a very successful year in track my senior year. Now I was no longer uh, uh, just a hurdler on the track team, but I, I really excelled in that way. Now, nearly 40 years later, I'm no longer a hurdler. I hurdled a few times after high school. But my friend Tom still is. He's actually the track coach at East Canton and they've won this Class A state track tournament three years in a row. And in fact, two years ago, he was named National High School Boys Track Coach of the year. As Christians, that's what Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, does for us. Just as Tom did for me. He hung in there with me. He, Jesus calls us. He encourages us. He models the Christian life. He teaches us. He exemplifies it. And he will make all, and it will make all the difference in our lives if we are willing. In high school track, it took me about three years to, to get really get started as a hurdler and, and, then, and then really to excel. Through the encouragement of my friend and through his example, Jesus will do the same for us in our Christian lives if we are willing. Listen to the words of Jesus from Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through 26. Then Jesus said to his disciples, he said to his disciples to help them become dynamic disciples. If anyone would come after me, they must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. What good will it be for a person if they gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? For what can a person give in exchange for their soul? Dynamic discipleship is not easy. It involves dedication, it involves sacrifice, but it's so worth it. Jesus said these words to his disciples to, to remind them of what really matters in life. Knowing Jesus, living for Jesus, and knowing that he is with us every step of the way. How do we live out? How do we grow in this dynamic, dynamic discipleship just as I grew and developed as a hurdler back throughout my high school years? If we look at John 
chapter 15, verses 1 through 10, it's a familiar passage to many of us when Jesus talks about being the true vine and we, his followers, Christians, disciples, are the branches. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a person remains in me and I in them, they will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, they are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands, and I remain in his love. Dynamic discipleship is about being connected to Jesus, remaining in Jesus and growing in Jesus. That involves many different aspects of our life, but especially remaining in Jesus, growing as dynamic disciples by being disciples of the word of God, learning God's truth, growing in God's truth, living out God's truth, God's truth for life. And that's something that we do on our own, but it's also something that we do in connection with other Christians through Bible study and through, and through small groups, learning God's word and growing together as God's people. It involves worship. All Christians, if we are able, are called to worship God together with other Christians. This time is so difficult for many of us here at our church as well as many, many other believers. The, the idea of canceling church and, and not having worship, collective corporate worship together, but it seems that at least for these few weeks, it's, it's the most responsible choice because of what's going on in our country and around the world with the coronavirus. But God calls us to worship Together, The whole Bible assumes that God's people will be together in worship on a regular basis. And specifically, the scripture tells us, do not neglect the assembling of yourselves together. Worship is so vital to grow as dynamic disciples of Jesus and to grow together as dynamic disciples of Jesus. We are also called to serve. We grow as dynamic disciples, we remain connected to Jesus. We're, we're, we're the branches and we're connected to the vine through our service, utilizing our gifts in the church and through the church and in the community and even in many different ways in the world. And again, impacting the world for Christ, not just as individuals, but together as God's people. We stay connected through, to Jesus by staying connected to one another as his people through fellowship. When I was in high school, my, my friend Tom, my best friend Tom and, and, and my teammates made such a difference. If it wasn't for him and if it wasn't for my teammates, I would have never, I would have never succeeded as a hurdler on the track team. When I was a young person, I grew up in the church and Sunday school and worship on Sunday and, and, and Bible school. And then as a teenager in youth group and connected with, with Christian friends, Christian fellowship is so important for us as dynamic disciples of Jesus. As it's so important to stay connected to each other 
And in that way, we also stay connected with Jesus, strengthened, growing, encouraging one another, supporting one another, having Christian friendships and inspiring one another as God's people. We stay connected through, to Jesus through our witness and our testimony, through our words, through our actions, and through our attitudes. As we live out the faith, it draws us closer to Jesus. It draws us closer to one another as his people. Our words, actions, and attitudes individually and as a church, and hopefully as a denomination, our witness and our testimony as dynamic disciples goes forth. And then prayer. Pray, pray, pray. Pray anytime, any place, for any reason. But not just individual prayer. Dynamic disciples also participate in corporate prayer, the body of Christ coming together, praying for one another, praying with one another as God's people. Like my high school hurdling career, dynamic discipleship does not just happen. It's putting Jesus first in our lives, receiving his gifts, receiving his grace, living in the power of the Holy Spirit and intentionally taking these steps, God's word, worship, serving and using our gifts, fellowship, witness, our witness and testimony, and then being people as of prayer, trust and obey, intentionally trust and obey each and every day. Right now, for a few weeks, we're hindered in some of these ways of, of living out our dynamic discipleship. But through this time, over the next week or the next two weeks or so, we can still be people of the word. We can still pray together. We can talk with one another. We can pray over the phone with one another. We can serve and we can help those in need. And when we are back together as a church family, in all of these ways and more, we can intentionally, intentionally be dedicated and have a priority to connect with God, to grow in faith, and to serve in love. That's our mission statement as a church, for us and to help others connect with God, grow in faith, and serve in love. And that is dynamic discipleship. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, we pray that you would help us all in this time of confusion, in this time of uncertainty. We pray that you would help us to trust in you and to know that you will never leave us and that you will never forsake us. Lord, we pray that during this time, even though we may not be together as your people, we would still be connected in spirit. We would be connected through conversations, maybe through texting and in other ways, that we would continue to grow in our faith and live out our faith. So that, Lord, when we come back together in worship and for faith builders and in our many, many small groups and activities and events here at the church and in our community, that we would be, that we would even be re-energized, that the, the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit would fall upon us in a new way, in a fresh way, that you would lead us to continually become the people of God that you've called us to be, the disciples of Jesus you have called us to be, the dynamic disciples of Christ that you've called us to be. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.